Hey everybody, it's Mike again, and we're gonna do a quick video demonstrating how to bring remote program audio, or, or really just remote audio of any kind, from, let's say, an event happening somewhere else that may be in another state, that may be in another country, um, but we're gonna bring in multiple channels of audio from another event that is not local to us, and we're gonna use Unity Connect um, along with loopback to bring our audio into the Unity server. In this video, I'm assuming you already know how to use Unity Intercom and Unity Connect, or at least are somewhat familiar, because I'm specifically demonstrating we use loopback uh, as a virtual device, as two virtual devices, actually. Um, and because that's really the important part is to, to make sure that we don't have any echo, we're gonna make two virtual devices. Uh, I'll jump right into it. So here's my Unity server. And let's say my Unity server is running here in Oklahoma, where I am. And it's in a nice stable location at our office with good internet and the port forwarding rules are already set up in our firewall. And, and this is where it lives. But there's an event happening in you know, Boston. And I have a team out there, maybe I've got a handful of people, and I need that, you know, they're going to use my Unity intercom. They're going to log in with users and such, and, and they're going to be um, utilizing my Unity intercom server, which is here in Oklahoma. People do that all the time, and that is a fantastic way because the team out there doesn't have to worry about port forwarding. Honestly, they got off the airport at Logan International and they were on cellular data and they could be on Unity right away. So there's no mess, no fuss. Locally though, at the event, what they will do is, um, in order to get some of some local audio into their Unity intercom, they're gonna send it to me via Unity Connect. Unity Connect is a, another software, it's right here. This runs on a Mac computer, just like the server does. So they'll need a Mac computer there in Boston and they'll fire up Unity Connect I already have port forwarding rules set up. And so all we need to do is establish that connection. Um, and they're gonna send audio to me and I'll show you the way that we handle the audio so that there's not an echo and so that uh, it works with loopback. Um, so here's what you do. Right now, I can see that the Unity server is set up so that the input device is the MacBook Pro microphone, the output device is the speakers. Um, we're gonna change all this. Um, so first thing, and I'll just kind of reposition things a little bit here. Uh, I'm just sort of doing this off the cuff, so bear with me. Um, okay, everything's good here. I'm going to go to my remotes tab, and you can see that I have established a connection uh, with Chuck, and we're, we're pretending that Chuck is in Boston. Um, Chuck's actually down the hall in another room. Uh, normally, though, this would be blank. Chuck in Boston would be the one to put my URL in the host field. I would normally leave this blank. Uh, I just happen to have I've typed that in for our connection. Um, here we are, we are, we're connected. We're actually using Unity Protect, so this uh, audio is encrypted, as you can see by the green shield. Um, and we have, a, we have a connection going here. What I'm gonna do is use loopback. So, Here's loopback. Remember, we're here in Oklahoma where the server is. I need to do a little preparation so that I can manage the audio that's gonna be sent to me from Boston, and then I'm gonna ultimately send back to Boston. We're gonna come in here and I'm gonna make a new virtual device, and I'm gonna call it, I usually name it the, the flow of, in, in the flow of audio. So in this case, it's connect to intercom because it's audio from Unity Connect from Boston being brought into the intercom. And you can name it anything you want to, of course, that makes sense to you. Um, let's give it eight channels. And I'm gonna make another one. There's another virtual device. These are, mind you, these are always pass-through devices in this scenario. And I'm gonna call this one intercom to connect because it's people talking on Unity Intercom on their devices back to um, connect and potentially back to someone on RTS or Clearcom that's, that's 
you know, on a hardwired belt pack or something like that. It's not necessary to do it this way, but if you, if you want it to be a full two way communication, this is how you would do this. Ignore these other virtual devices that I have. So once again, we have a intercom to connect, which is audio from people talking on unity intercom back to, um, a traditional third party comm system or a soundboard potentially. Um, and then we have our connect to intercom, which is remember, I know this is confusing. It's Boston sending me audio so I can bring it into unity server to be a benefit to the team in Boston. Um, so I need to go back to my intercom to connect and I, I'm going to give it eight output channels as well. And so the only two things we need to worry about are the connect to intercom and intercom to connect. I'll slide that off here. Now we're in unity connect here. Um, I need to close and reopen unity connect and I need to close and reopen the server. And the reason for that is the snapshots of the IO configuration are done upon launch. So because I made changes to loopback, I won't see those changes reflect in real time. So I need to do a quick reboot. I'll bring that back into view. Um, we're going to go to remotes. Here's my audio. Um, here's, here's Chuck. He's my contact out in Boston in our, in our, in our scenario here. Um, I'm going to go to incoming because he's going to be sending me audio. I need to add Chuck. There's Chuck. I'm going to enable him. I may or may not want to sync, right? M remember up here it says play incoming streams locally through the playback one. That's another aggregate, uh, excuse me. That's another loopback device. I actually don't want to use that one. I want to use, this is going to be, uh, this will be the, connect to intercom. I even I had to uh, think about it for a second. That's why I wanted to do this video because it, it does does take a, a little bit to chew on it. So this is connect to intercom. Um, so we're playing from Boston into our intercom. And, in, and we're playing to the virtual device. This is the loopback device that we're writing the audio to, so to speak. And I'm going to map one to one, and I'm just going to do eight. You'll notice that it, it changed here because I switched, it, I switched it to a virtual device that's only an eight in, eight out. So now I am actually, I should be writing audio to loopback. So if we come to loopback here, we can see that you connect aka boston to intercom has audio and excellent so so we can so what we're creating is a common write to and listen to source because uh, unity connect and unity intercom don't write to each other directly perhaps one day in the future but right now they don't and so that's why i'm using you back that's the, the loop back that's the whole point so we're, we're just we just need a common device to read and write to um Instead of, you know, we could have a physical I.O. device, but in this case, because we're both on the same computer, we're using loopback. So now that we've done connect to intercom, uh, that's getting audio into the server. And so I, I probably should demonstrate that. So let's bring up the Unity server here. And my input source now needs to be... Um, connect to intercom. Uh, again, I always I hesitate because I'm making sure we're, the audio is flowing in the right direction. The input source must be connect to intercom because that's my audio from Boston that's going to be brought into our intercom stuff. And I'm going to come here and let's say I've got a, a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of stuff here. But what I would do then is I would begin to start mapping Oh, okay. And I need to change my output source. Okay. So anyway, you would begin to map your, your inputs and your outputs at that point. Um, so my output device, I actually want to be intercom to connect because that's people talking on the unity intercom app. Um, and, and I'm going to send that back to connect that's to, in, and back to where it came from to potentially tie in with RTS, Clearcom, Riedel, or even just a soundboard or something like that. Not, I don't have to do it. If it's one-way audio for listening, I don't have to do this. But I want to show this because typically people want to be able to get back to a producer or a director um, 
in back in their headset who they may not even be using unity in a lot of cases they're not uh they're there at a key panel okay so i'm gonna go back to my channels here and now i'll have eight channels to choose from so i can do a one-to-one -one in, in, in all the, forgive all this is you know i do all kinds of stuff with other companies and such so, so uh, the mappings are kind of crazy but um here's an input one to output one and then you could do input two to output two that's going to send the that boston audio that's going to put it in these channels um what you can also do is go to the audio feeds tab here and you can make them listen only program feeds which don't take up channels so that's also something that a lot of people will do um because you can still talk back on a channel even though you're listening on a monitoring feed i won't go down that road but that's a, you know there's only there's two ways you can handle audio coming into a unity server map it into channels or make it listen only monitoring program feeds. Um, this can actually be a nicer way to listen to audio at times. Um, what we need to also do now is change. So we've got, okay, well I'm, I've got my output, which is intercom to connect. And that means that outputting up, you know, one and two should be sending audio um, on loop, well, on loopback, but of course I don't have any audio right now. So it would be the intercom to connect. So to test it, I can come in here and I can do a 10 second test tone. And my mappings are correct. You can see audio is showing up on channels one and channels two. That's people talking on Unity, potentially. Because um, with Unity Intercom, whatever audio is brought into a channel is automatically minused or subtracted or nulled on the output side. So we never send anybody their own audio back to create the echo. Now. One thing that people might mess up, it would be really bad. See this input, you connect to intercom. If, if I also, if I, if I try to read and write to the same device, what's going to happen is I'm going to create massive amounts of echo. Um, we're reading and writing from, from one common device, and that's going to create feedback and echoes. Um, so we definitely need two virtual devices, a, you know, we need one to get audio in and a separate one for audio out. So if you're having echo or if you've ever attempted this in the past and you had a bunch of feedback, make sure, you know, cause it, that one of the common mistakes is to not make a second loopback device so that you're reading from one and you're writing to the other. Keep your audio off each other. Otherwise, they're just going to sum together and mix and you can create quite a bit of echo. So you would go into the other, you know, uh, I guess probably our next step here would be to bring up connect and to go on the outgoing side. And here's Chuck. So we're pretending Chuck is in Boston and we want to send audio to Chuck right now I'm sending the wrong audio uh, I need to come in here and do intercom to connect and then reselect Chuck here um, this once again is sending the audio from unity intercom back to connect which could which is often I, I know I, I say it a lot which is often Clearcom or RTS or somebody local in Boston on a hardwired system and we're, we're sending those unity responses back to them this is um, this is actually done quite a bit but it's also something that a lot of people are looking to do. And it is confusing to explain. It's, it doesn't, it's hard to sum this up really fast because it is a little, you know, it, it, this is all software that you, you can't see any wires. It, it gets, you know, the direction of this audio can be a little confusing. So hopefully you can use this video as a, as a little quick guide in remembering intercom to connect and connect to intercom. Um, sometimes you, you'll see unity to connect and connect to unity. They're, they're both unity in a sense. And so I tend to, I tend to say connect to, to intercom, uh, and, and intercom to connect. But the experience on site though is nice and seamless. People just open up their unity intercom app and, you know, boom, magically all the audio is there. They can hear the producer who's on Clearcom or, you know, maybe he's in a, he's in a truck somewhere. They hear that audio. They, they, they're in touch with him. They can get right back in touch and they're just running around on cellular data or Wi-Fi. Um, 
but it's real. It, it the experience there in Boston, people using my Unity Intercom server, the team in Boston's experience is fantastic. It's easy. They can go anywhere, anywhere in the city, and they're still connected. Um, so huge advantages over some traditional traditional options. But um, I believe that explained it all. Um, I'll, wa I'll watch this video and make sure. But I appreciate everybody. And, and again, let us know here at Unity Intercom if you have questions about this or if we can ever clarify anything. Um, but I, I wanted to demonstrate that, uh, that process. Thanks.